we're going to find the volume of a solid where we're rotating the region bounded by th uh, two curves, uh, x to the si y equals x to the 6 and y equals 1, about the line y equals 6. Okay, so where's the line y equals 6? We'll start with the easy one. That's right here. There's the y equals 6 line. Now that's not a boundary line, that's a uh, axis where we're gonna rotate. So if you notice, I drew it as a dotted line, not a solid line, so I don't think that it's an actual boundary of the region, it is not. The boundaries of the region, we have a, now this x of six is not a parabola, but it's gonna graph very similar. You can plug in negative one, zero, and one, you get these three points on the graph. And it just keeps going up on both sides after that. The y equals 1 graph is just a horizontal line at y equals 1. So now we have our region right here. It's this little region right there I shaded in. All right, now, first thing you notice is this, when we rotate this around, let's get a new color. Good, purple, all right. When we rotate this region around, uh, what's going to happen, let me redraw it right here. So it's going to get rotated around. When it's all the way at the top, it's going to look like this. And then in between, not the best drawing ever. Uh, it's actually going to be hollow in the middle. So it's going to only have this kind of uh, volume at the, the edges. going to be hollow in the middle. And so we have to be a little bit more careful on this one. And there's a few ways to compute this, uh, this volume. So what I did above the problem here, anytime that you're gonna have a hollow, uh, a hollow solid where there's gonna be a middle taken out, you're gonna have a big radius and a small radius. So the big one is the bigger orange, the small one's the smaller orange. And the way we're gonna get the, uh, Area, it's the big area minus the small area. And oops. so I just drew out in pictures the big area minus the small area. And what's the big area? It's going to be pi big R squared or pi R squared. The small area is the other pi R squared. And I like to use the letter R because I think of radius. And I use a big R for the big radius and a little r for the little radius. I'm trying to keep it simple and you can factor the pi out, they both have a pi. And when you go ahead and put it into the volume function, it looks like this right here. So this is for a hollow solid, or a solid with the center removed. That's the case that we have down here. So what we need is a big radius and a small radius. And again, I use big R and little r. So let's start with a little r, it's a bit more simple you can actually just see little r goes from that line to that line, and it's the same the entire time, so it's always gonna be five. It's constant, not changing. Big R, slightly different, but not that much. Here's it's going from that y value to that y value. Now the bottom y value is definitely changing. What is the bottom y value? It comes from the x to the sixth function. So here's the small, right there, x to the sixth function. The big is always six. So this radius function is six minus x to the sixth. That's the big minus the small. Okay, so we got the, uh, and here's again what I just described up top. It's just big radius minus small radius right there. The x values where these intersect were pretty obvious from the graph if you were careful. Uh, if you weren't careful, how do you intersect? You set one equal to x to the sixth, and you'll pretty easily figure out uh, that x is plus or minus one. And that's where you get the plus and minus one right here. You can use symmetry on these problems. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to see that they're symmetric, uh, but if you par cut this or partition this right here at x equals zero, you could compute the volume of just that right half rotated and then double that volume and that would be your total volume. You're welcome to do that. But I just want to warn you a little bit, uh, depending on how you rotate, uh, it 
could look symmetric here. Like this region is definitely symmetric uh, with respect to the y-axis. However, oh no. If I rotate it the, uh, if I'd rotate it about this axis, this line right here, then I would lose that symmetry. It would not be symmetric. They're kind of, this part would make a smaller volume and this would be a bigger volume because it's rotating further. So you can use symmetry when you rotate, but you really need to make sure it's actually symmetric. And just because your region looks symmetric doesn't mean that the rotated solid is going to be symmetric. So just be a little bit careful. When in doubt, I'd recommend against using symmetry. And of course, you got to finish this integral off to get the actual uh, answer, the actual numerical answer. Uh, and to do that, you do need to FOIL this right here and then combine like terms. You'll get some constants. You can combine the constants. And then you're going to use the anti-power rule and uh, be done with it.